Season four. Season four, episode five. All right, we're <laughs> back for another season. Today we're gonna to be discussing answers to frequently asked questions about our product that we get every day. So let's get started. My generator outlets don't match up with my Reliance transfer switch. Yeah. What do you think? I think that uh, they should be using an adapter cord. And what about an adapter cord? What's an example? Uh, well, an example would be, let's say you have a single pole generator, 125 volt generator. Okay. Uh, it's got an L5. 30 outlet, yep. and your transfer switch is a two-pole generator transfer switch. It has four wires. So an adapter cord would um, mate the two together, um, and the connector itself would have a bridged um, on the two hots. So basically, you'll have 125 volts on each of the circuits. Right, and if you're plugging it up to our 12240 <clears throat> transfer switch, you can separate the breakers and the switches that are tied together to use 120 volts across the entire transfer switch. And we've got quite a few adapter cords. We got, we got a whole thing out there. It's called Color Connect. Um, it's pretty sweet. They are really color-coded. Um, orange, blue, red, green, white, clear, black. Um, it's, it's a really nice little connection thing for multiple applications um, for different kinds of generators to different kinds of uh, transfer switches. Each configuration of plug has a different color. Each end of it, yes, like the plug would have one color, uh, the connector would have another color. Um, yeah. So it's, what's really nice is that it's, it's a basically uh, it's, a, it's a system that uh, you can easily figure out what kind of an outlet you need or what kind of an adapter you need. And those colors <clears throat> match up with our cords that we make. So, uh, you know, a clear end is a 30 amp and it, it, it would match up to the clear end on an adapter cord. So, you know, which side is supposed to mate with which side. So can I extend those wires if they're not long enough? Sure. So the wires that we use to go in your main panel, so the A through you know, J, if you have a 10 circuit switch, those are all labeled. Uh, on the actual printing themselves. So a lot of times if you just glance at the wires and, and maybe you're expecting to see you know, big wire markers on there, you're not going to see them and, and maybe you don't know, well, how am I supposed to know which wire goes to what breaker? Look closer and down the entire printing of the wires themselves, you'll see AAAA, BBBBB, um, and, and that's how you know which two wires are, are supposed to be you know, for a circuit in your main panel. It's in the silver paint, so you may want to look for that. Um, a lot of people don't realize that it's silver paint, not white or black, um, but it's silver because that works on, well on both the red and the black wires. So if you need to extend wires now on that other part of your question, um, yeah, you can extend the wires. Um, we don't recommend extending them from our transfer switch because that becomes a modification to the transfer switch and it kind of voids the, the UL thing, um, the UL listing on it. So we always recommend using a, a junction box mm -hmm. to make any kind of extension of wire. So you can extend them as long as you want from that junction box. But, you know, some, some uh, caution is, is, is needed because you want to make sure you don't want to exceed 100 feet. Uh, another thing <clears throat> to keep in mind, too, is, you know, depending on what kind of space, you know, restrictions you have where your main panel is, you know, a lot of people think, well, these wires are never going to get there because, you know, I see the picture and, and the conduit's going to the left. Well, it's important to remember the conduit can be run from either side. And also, the transfer switch can be mounted sideways or upside down, uh, whether, whatever you need to do to, to get it into your main panel. What conduit size is used with uh, each transfer switch? Uh, well, it's real simple. For the four or six circuit models, it's going to be three quarter inch conduit. Uh -huh. And for eight or ten circuits, it's going to be one inch conduit. Got it. Now, if that doesn't work for you, um, you can always make the holes a little bigger and use a larger conduit, like an inch and a quarter. So, I mean, it, there is some versatility that you can do to the, the panel uh, conduit. And um, if, if it's easier to run through an inch and a quarter, by all means, use an inch and a quarter. Why does the GFCI trip certain generators? 
That's a very common question. So essentially, uh, most generators nowadays has a what's known as a grounded or a bonded neutral generator. And essentially all that is, is it means the ground and the neutral are tied together on the frame of the generator. Uh, this causes issues with a GFCI protected receptacle. And keep in mind, this is only the receptacle that you'd be plugging into on the generator itself. So not talking about like the 15 or 20 amp outlets, we're specifically talking about the, the plug that you'd be using to power the transfer switch. If that is protected by GFCI, you will get a nuisance trip on the breaker on the generator. And the reason for that is because the way that our transfer switch hooks into your main panel, the ground and neutral are bonded there as well as on the generator now, creating a ground and neutral loop, which the GFCI notices as a nuisance. And that's what trips the generator. Uh, there are solutions to this. It gets complicated and that's when we want you to call us because, yeah. um, there are ways of, of fixing that, getting that taken care of, but it's not really meant for a video um, to, to really discuss. Um, we also have those GFI issues inside panels. Um, your main panel, let's say it has AFCI or GFCI breakers, and those trip when you plug in your generator. And now when, when you flip your switch to generator mode, those breakers trip. Well, your concern might be that, oh no, it's not working. I'm not going to have any GFCI or AFCI protection. You're right. Um, when you're in generator mode, you won't have that connection. Your breakers inside your main panel are going to trip. And then what you want to do is when the power comes back on again, you're simply just going to reset those breakers. And it's just usually a little push button. But it is an extra step. On each transfer switch, they've got a number in the front, they've got a prefix and a suffix. What sure. do they mean? Like on a, on a ProTran 2, let's say, uh, let's just go with the A306A. Uh, the A would mean it has a 30 amp um, double pole breaker installed by the factory. It means it's a 30 amp transfer switch and it has six circuits. And the A means that it has an inlet on the bottom. That could be used on multiple transfer switches across the board. We have a RA306A, which means it's a rain tight 30 amp breaker installed, um, <clears throat> 30 amp transfer switch <clears throat> with six circuits with the inlet installed. So I know that uh, the other suffixes, I think, uh, well, Kirk probably can tell you about those. Sure. So, you know. A little bit further into our catalog, obviously, but there is the A at the end, which Ginter mentioned, has the inlet and watt meters. That's right. Uh, there is a B <coughs> suffix, which would just be an inlet, no watt meters. There is a C suffix, which means that it has watt meters but no <coughs> inlet. And there's also a D, which means it doesn't have any watt meters or an inlet. It's just a plain bare transfer switch. Well, we've been talking about our rain tight transfer switches. They're used in any place you'll find without basements. You'll see these used throughout California, the southern segment of the United States, Florida. So, why don't you run through some of the features of the rain tight transfer switch? Well, it's, it's first of all, it's got a uh, weather tight enclosure, it's got a lock so that it can be locked up. Um, it's not something where, you know, the neighbor's going to come over and flip switches on you as a prank. Um, inside, it's got, it's got the, the meters up on the top. It has the toggle switches. And they're very robust switches, by the way. It has the breakers. And then on the bottom is where the power gets connected from your generator. Your, your cord would plug into the rain tights, uh in an outside situation from your generator and you can see that it's uh it plugs in underneath and it's a watertight connection with the cord end knockouts on the bottom and we have one on the left side we have one on the right side and then two on the back near the bottom can i put pan tandem breakers in a transfer switch absolutely uh well you can't put uh let me rephrase that. Yeah. You, can't, you can't put 
a tandem breaker in the transfer switch, but you can connect a tandem breaker to the breakers on the transfer switch. You have to use two breakers right next to each other, though. So you want to make sure that you have the two breakers on different poles. Next question, can I buy direct from Reliance Controls? No, we don't sell direct. Uh, we do have um, multiple ways of getting that product. We got internet dealers, which are probably some of the nicest guys you've ever talked to. Yeah. We got almost, almost every electrical distributor that can get these for you pretty quickly also. Keep in mind that you may have to wait a few days to get one from, from, from somebody, but at least they would be on order. they're on order. And we do first come, first serve. Um, we also have some retailers that sell our products. Uh, there's quite a few of them, and they're all listed in our, on our website. Customer service is extremely important to us. It's one of the trademarks of our company. And uh, call us anytime at 800-634-6155. Check us out on ReliancePatrols.com and follow us on Facebook and LinkedIn. Reliance Controls, electrical innovation since 1909.